This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 457, How to Cure Deep Procrastination by Cal Newport of calnewport.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, the guy who reads blogs to you every single day to help you optimize your life. And it is with permission from the authors. And today, like yesterday, I'm reading a post from Cal Newport. Yesterday, he explained how procrastination could be stemmed from the caveman days. And this one is more about how to cure it. So you don't have to listen to yesterday's episode for this to make sense since the post stands on its own, but if you like today's reading, you'll probably like yesterday's too. So with that, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. How to Cure Deep Procrastination by Cal Newport of calnewport.com The Deep Procrastination Crisis You can see a snapshot of my blog email inbox filtered to only show emails from students struggling with deep procrastination. Notice that there are close to 60 such messages. If I include blog comments in the search, the number jumps into the hundreds. Deep procrastination is a distressing affliction. Students who suffer from it lose the ability to start schoolwork. Deadlines pass and they hand nothing in. Professors provide special extensions, but the students still can't bring themselves to do the work, and so on. As evidenced by my inbox, this issue is surprisingly common, especially at elite colleges. Yet it's almost entirely off the radar of traditional student counseling, which is why I dedicate time to it here. In my previous post, read to you yesterday on Optimal Living Daily, I introduced a dubious evolutionary explanation for an otherwise very real phenomenon. Procrastination, in my experience, is not a character flaw, but instead evidence that you don't have a believable plan for succeeding at what you're trying to do. In this post, as promised, I want to apply this evolutionary perspective to help better understand and therefore better combat the deep variety of this common issue. The question of why. Deep procrastination usually strikes students later in their college career when the difficulty of their courses ratchets up. At this stage, their workload gets harder and harder, and at some point, some powerful part of their brain says, no more. An evolutionary perspective on procrastination helps explain this reaction. The student is asking his or her brain to expend lots of energy. From a biological perspective, studying for an orgo exam is an expensive thing to do. One way to see this process is that there's an ancient part of our brain that has evolved to evaluate any such plans, a filter of sorts, to prevent the wasting of precious energy. Why are we going to expend so much precious energy, it asks. The more modern, abstract reasoning, rational part of the student's brain is quick to respond because we need to expend this energy to pass the test which we need to earn our degree. What the is a degree and why do we need one? The ancient brain counters. Because that's what you're supposed to do, the rational brain responds. And this is where the problem occurs. The rational part of the brain is promoting an abstract societal value. It knows that for a middle-class American, earning a college degree is an expected milestone on your path to integration into the middle-class economy but the ancient brain doesn't do well with abstract societal values, which are a recent addition to humankind on the scale of evolutionary time. One way to understand deep procrastination, therefore, is as a rejection of an ambiguous abstract answer to the key question of why you're going through the mental strain required by the college experience. As in my previous post, I'm using an evolutionary explanation metaphorically as a way to help explain a concrete phenomenon I've observed in my research and writing on this topic. Whether the evolutionary explanation for the phenomenon is strictly true is somewhat beside the point and beyond my expertise. The good news is that this understanding provides a clear strategy for combating the scourge. Form a more concrete and personal answer to the question of why. Combating deep procrastination. From my experience, an effective answer to this question of why you're at college can be constructed through the following process. First, devise a tentative answer to the following question. What makes a good life good? This is the foundation on which everything else in your life will be built. Your goal is not to identify the right answer, but to instead identify a working hypothesis. This answer will evolve along with your life experience, so this is not a time of perfectionism. If you're religious, your starting point for finding this answer is obvious. If you're not religious, you could jump into philosophy, as this question has been at the core of human thinking since the time of the Greeks, but I found it's more approachable to start with biographies of people whose life you admire, looking for evidence of their own responses to this prompt. Second, decide how your experience at college can best be leveraged to support this vision of a good life. If, for example, you decide the key to a good life is to master something useful to the world, this might lead you to see college as an opportunity to master a hard skill while exposing yourself to examples of people applying this skill in useful ways. Third, 
identify the set of specific student tactics that will help you succeed in this leveraging. In our above example, this thinking might lead you to the concrete strategies I espoused in my Romantic Scholar series. This process provides a more personal and concrete answer to the fundamental question being posed by your ancient brain. Why should I expend all this difficult energy? It asks once again. Because it's part of a well thought through plan for leading a good life, you now respond. Sounds good, it agrees while you head to the library. As I noted in an earlier post on this subject, this self-reflection is not an easy process. But college really is a fantastic time to face these basic questions. Deep procrastination, once you understand its source, doesn't have to be a Jobian affliction. It can instead be seen as the prompt you need to get your internal shop in order. You just listened to the post titled How to Cure Deep Procrastination by Cal Newport of calnewport.com. And if you like Cal Newport's work, you can check out his book, Deep Work. You can find more about that at calnewport.com. And to help keep this podcast going, come by oldpodcast.com. That's where you can join my weekly newsletter where I send you life tips, quotes, and free stuff once a week. And I do a lot of book giveaways and have some spreadsheets to help you optimize your life. It's all free. And there's more info about how to support this podcast, both financially and otherwise. That's all at oldpodcast.com, O-L-D podcast.com. Come by to show some love and help motivate me to keep making episodes. Have a great Sunday and start to your new week, and I'll be back tomorrow with an author we haven't heard from in a long time. I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.